Good afternoon. This is Akashmani and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Mitte News. The headlines. National Investigation Agency conducts searches at over 100 places across six states in connection with narco terror gangster nexus. Suspense over new Karnataka chief minister continues. Congress party still indecisive over the name. Quad leaders meeting scheduled in Sydney next week called off. India pavilion to be inaugurated at the Cannes Film Festival in France today. India Meteorological Department says southwest monsoon onset over Kerala likely to be delayed, expected to arrive by 4th of June. And in IPL cricket, Punjab Kings to take on Delhi Capitals in Dharmshala this evening. And now the news in detail. The National Investigation Agency NIA is conducting searches at over 100 places across six states in connection with cases related to narco terror gangster nexus. The agency is conducting searches in close coordination with the state police forces at the premises linked to suspects. Sources said the searches are being conducted in connection with three separate cases lodged by the NIA last year. The suspense over the new Karnataka chief minister continues as Congress party is yet indecisive over the name. Hectic political activities are underway in the national capital regarding the selection of the new chief minister. Senior Congress leader and former chief minister Sidharamaiah and Karnataka Congress president DK Shiv Kumar both are lobbying to be the next CM. Mr. Sidharamaiah today met party leader Rahul Gandhi in New Delhi. Karnataka Congress Working President Ishwar Khandare today met party's national president Malikarjun Kharge in New Delhi. Talking to reporters in New Delhi, Mr. Khandare said that he discussed the recent developments in Karnataka with Mr. Kharge. He added that Congress is united and the decision for the CM's post may be taken by this evening. Congress has won 135 seats in the recently held election to the 224-member Karnataka Assembly. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a three-nation tour of Japan, Papua New Guinea and Australia on Friday. He will be on a visit to Hiroshima in Japan from the 19th of May to 21st of May at the invitation of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for the G7 summit. During the summit, the Prime Minister will speak at G7 sessions with partner countries on subjects such as peace, stability and prosperity of a sustainable planet, food, fertilizer and energy security. He will also hold bilateral meetings with some of the participating leaders on the sidelines of the summit. The External Affairs Ministry said the Prime Minister will then travel to Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea to host the third summit of the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation, jointly with his Papua New Guinea counterpart James Marape on the 22nd of May. This forum involves India and 14 Pacific Island countries. Prime Minister Modi will have bilateral engagements in Papua New Guinea, including meetings with Governor General Bob Dade and Prime Minister James Marape. This will be the first visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Papua New Guinea. On the same day, the Prime Minister will visit Sydney in Australia. He will have a bilateral meeting with his Australian counterpart, Anthony Albanese, on the 24th of May. The Prime Minister will also interact with Australian CEOs and business leaders and address the Indian diaspora at a community event in Sydney on the 23rd of May. The Quad Leaders meeting, which was scheduled to be held in Sydney next week, has been called off after US President Joe Biden cancelled his visit to attend the event. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese announced this. The leaders of Australia, US, Japan and India were scheduled to meet in Sydney on the 24th of this month. Mr. Biden was due to address the federal parliament on the 23rd of May. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said he hopes to meet with Biden, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the G7 summit in Japan on the weekend. Albanese said the leaders are attempting to get together over that period of time and will have a bilateral discussion with President Biden. He said Japanese Prime Minister Kishida won't be coming to Australia as planned, but Indian Prime Minister Mr. Modi will still travel to Sydney for a scheduled bilateral meeting. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the International Museum Expo 2023 at Pragati Medan in New Delhi tomorrow. The International Museum Expo is being organized as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav to celebrate the 47th International Museum Day. The theme for this year is Museums sustainability and well-being during the program mr modi will inaugurate a virtual walk through of the upcoming national museum at the north and south blocks upsc has decided to offer alternate centers to candidates of manipur's imphal center of civil services preliminary examination 2023 after reviewing the situation in manipur the examination is to be held on the 28th of may the alternate centers are aizol in mizoram kohima in nagaland shillong in meghalaya dispur and jorhat in assam kolkata in west bengal and delhi the center change option will be available to the candidates of imphal center through the interactive voice response system or ivrs facility upsc said a message in this regard will be sent to each candidate on their registered mobile number a candidate can also reach office of any district administration in manipur to contact upsc on telephone numbers 2307064123 2338 and 2338 from 12 noon today till 5 pm on friday the option of change of centers for such candidates will also be available on the website of upsc from 12 noon today till 5 pm on friday round the clock this is akashvani giving you the news For quick news updates around the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at @eir news alerts. As the Narendra Modi government is completing 9 years in office this month, Akashvani News brings a series of special stories on the initiatives taken by the government. Today, we take a look at Jal Jeevan Mission in the hilly state of Mizoram. Lying in the northeast corner of India, Mizoram has been facing water scarcity, especially that of drinking water with the increase of its population. Due to its hilly terrain with steep slopes, narrow valleys and dissected ridges with deep gorges, groundwater cannot be utilized as the main source of water supply. However, the state is blessed with abundant rainfall and many springs and perennial streams, so these make up for the main sources of water. Generally springs located within or near the settlement areas are utilized for tapping drinking water. The community managed improved village spring source called Tuikur in local language, private wells and individual rainwater harvesting system are the main traditional sources of rural drinking water supply. With the introduction of Jal Jeevan Mission, safe and adequate drinking water is being provided throughout the state. Public Health Engineering Department Government of Mizoram is working in full swing towards realizing the vision of the NDA government more from our correspondent in Aizol Jal Jeevan Mission was first implemented in Mizoram in 2019 and in a span of 4 years around 78% of FHTCs are being covered. The Public Health Engineering Department said it is expected that all households in the villages be covered by the end of this year. Ms. Lal Kepuy, Senior Assistant Engineer, PHE Department said that So far this achievement could be reached with the help of community contribution in the form of labor. This is Arlal Daypuy, senior assistant engineer, PHD Government of Mizoram. The total number of rural households in Mizoram is 133,060. Under Jal Jeevan Mission, the state had achieved 78% functional household tap connection as of 15 March 2023. We are targeting 100% coverage by December 2023. Engineer Lal Ropuya said JJM has changed the lives of people especially that of the villagers The JJM Jal Jeevan Mission changed the lives of rural people in Mizoram earlier they used to fetch water from distant sources and the quality of which was not up to the mark with the implementation of JJM villages can now have better quality water in their premises 
The total number of FHTCs provided in Mizoram is 1,3338, which constitutes 78% and remaining balance of households are numbered at 29,722 in the state. For Akashwani News, Irene from Aizol. On the final day of the third Energy Transitions Working Group meeting under India's G20 presidency, over 100 delegates representing G20 member countries, special invitee countries and international organizations are holding intense deliberations on priority areas. The discussions over draft ministerial communique are also underway. Sessions related to green hydrogen, low-cost finance for new and critical technologies for energy transition, critical minerals and biofuels were organized in the morning. A seminar titled Accelerating Energy Efficiency Progress and Promoting Life has been organized on the sidelines of the event. Speaking to Akashwani News, Secretary for Ministry for New and Renewable Energy, B.S. Bhalla said, India aims to increase its renewable energy capacity to 500 gigawatt by 2030. He shared the details of the trajectory planned to achieve the 500 gigawatt target. As far as the government of India is concerned, our trajectory is that we have 500 gigawatt non-fossil electricity capacity to reach 2030. और अभी हम करीबन 172 गीगावाट की हमारी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कैपेसिटी है रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेज से तो हमें 172 से 500 पहुंचना है और ये लक्ष्य को पहुंचने के लिए हमने कई कदम लिए हैं कुछ तो प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं जो अंडर इंस्टॉलेशन है जो इंप्लीमेंटेशन है तो हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि वो जल्दी से जल्दी कंप्लीट हो जाए इसके साथ-साथ हमने एक बिडिंग ट्रैजेक्टरी एक नई घोषित की है जहां पर हम करीबन 50 गीगावाट की हर साल बिडिंग हम करवाएंगे Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Dr. L. Murugan, will inaugurate the India Pavilion in Cannes International Film Festival, France, today. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur will address the inaugural session through a video message. In a series of tweets, Dr. Murugan said he is proud to participate in the red carpet reception of the world-famous Cannes Film Festival, wearing the Veshti shirt, a traditional Tamil attire. He said it is a proud moment for every Indian and Tamil to step on the world stage wearing the traditional dress emblazoned with country's national flag when India is chairing the G20 summit. Filmmaker Gunit Monga accompanied the minister as also actors Manushi Chiller, Isha Gupta and Kangabam Tomba. Four Indian films have made it to the official selection in Khan Film Festival including Kanu Behal's Agra and Anurag Kashyap's Kennedy. Apart from these, many Indian films are slotted to be screened in March. The films, a restored Manipuri film Ishan Ho, is also being showcased in the classic section. The India Pavilion is based on the theme of showcasing India's creative economy to the global community. The pavilion design has been inspired by the Saraswati Yantra, the abstract representation of Goddess Saraswati. It has been conceptualized and designed by National Institute of Design. India Meteorological Department has said that this year, the southwest monsoon onset over Kerala is likely to be slightly delayed than normal date. It is now expected to arrive by 4th of June. Southwest monsoon normally sets in over Kerala on 1st of June. Advance of the southwest monsoon over Indian mainland is marked by monsoon onset over Kerala and is an important indicator characterizing the transition from hot and dry season to a rainy season. Earlier, Ministry of Earth Sciences said that the country is likely to receive normal monsoon rainfall this year. In IPL cricket, Punjab Kings will take on Delhi Capitals in Dharamshala this evening. The match will start at 7.30 p.m. Last night, Lucknow Supergiants defeated Mumbai Indians by five runs in Lucknow. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. National Investigation Agency conducts searches at over 100 places across six states in connection with narco-terror gangster nexus. Suspense over new Karnataka Chief Minister continues. Congress party is still indecisive over the name. Quad leaders meeting scheduled in Sydney next week called off. India Pavilion to be inaugurated at the Cannes Film Festival in France today. India Meteorological Department says southwest monsoon onset over Kerala likely to be delayed, expected to arrive by 4th of June. And in IPL cricket, Punjab Kings to take on Delhi Capitals in Dharamshala this evening. And with that, we end the midday news.